संघर्ष में भी संघ धन हर्ष दो शब्दों से बनता है कि जिसके साथ हर्ष माने खुशी है या जिसको खुशी देना चाहता है उसके ही जीवन में संघर्ष आएगा जिसको ऊपर वाला खुशी देना नहीं चाहता ना उसके जीवन में संघर्ष नहीं आएगा मेरा ना सोच है This was today's powerful message from the one who led the foundation of Amritam with his hard work and in-depth knowledge of Ayurveda our very own Ashok uncle and you know what his presence on this season's very first episode makes the season even more special Welcome to season 2 of Rediscovering Self with Amritam. Amritam is an Ayurvedic lifestyle brand and wellness community growing globally, celebrating nature, beauty and mindful living. This is your host Shweta Dalmia and on this season we together take the journey of building a healthier, happier and fuller life through the power of incredibly powerful Ayurveda. Yes, it's about our health, our happiness and that too at our own place, our very own Amritam, your Amritam. Let's get started. Welcome Dr. Nidhi on Rediscovering Self with Amritam. Thank you, Shweta. It's a pleasure to be here on the Amritam podcast. You know, Dr. Nidhi, sometimes a passing thought, a question that just goes around our mind is if Ayurveda is right for me. Is it going to work for me? Well, I don't know. So today let's discover this thought, I don't know, this doubt, this question if Ayurveda is right for me. So tell me like what is Ayurveda and is Ayurveda right for me, right for us? Is it right for every listener who is listening to us right now? Absolutely, Shweta. That's a really great question to address. And the answer to this is that if you are living on the planet Earth and if you are a human being, Ayurveda is for you. If you're a Martian, if you're living on another planet, I'm not sure. But if you're a human being and you're living on planet Earth, it is a science of human life. The word Ayurveda is two words, Ayuhu and Veda. Ayuhu means life. Veda means science. While Ayurveda originated in India, I can't say it's traditional Indian medicine. It's not. Neither can I say it's a medicine system. What it is, it is the science of life. So everything that has to do with life, whether it is self-care, whether it is healing, whether it is social conduct, whether it is how do you enjoy through all your five senses, how do you preserve this body so it can pursue all its goals of human life and how do you live in alignment with the universe so the one thing i want to say even before you go to your next question is a lot of people assume that ayurveda only has to do with treating diseases i would say that's a very small percentage of ayurveda and some people think it's about prevention and living a good life and taking care of your skin and hair and that's also a small percentage of ayurveda but ayurveda has literally everything right from how do you do deal with negative energies to how do you interact with your friends to who do you keep as friends just you name it any question that you have on in human life about human life or life on earth ayurveda answers so that's how broad and how comprehensive ayurveda is so it is for every human on the planet you know like when we know that this is like this amazing i call it magical so but why do we still have this question that is it right for me or why is it sometimes so difficult for people to trust this to follow this like where are we lacking you know i think it was day before yesterday only on twitter i was reading a thread where this little boy you know he had this problem in liver and doctor suggested that the liver has to be transplanted but the parents weren't ready and so they went for the ayurvedic method and i think it's been an year or so and he he got cured completely right right and see shweta see again the story is a story of treatment and it's a story mm. of healing and these are exciting stories right so ayurveda became popularized by all these exciting stories when it did right oh my god you can get better if you have a disease i mean nobody wants to hear boring stories about how do you look after yourself when you're already feeling well so prevention makes a boring story treatment makes an exciting story So as Ayurveda became popular for its treatments what then happened I believe over the years right Ayurveda became all about treatment people started assuming that Ayurveda is only for treatment of diseases now in an unregulated 
unregulated medical environment, when, when there were practitioners and other people who said, oh my God, there is an opportunity to create a business because Ayurveda offers treatments. I would say there was a lot, there has been a lot of corruption in the industry, right? Because it's not, it's dysregulated. It does not have regulation, but it became popular because of treatments. Over the years, over many, many, many years, you know, herbs and uh, herbal medicines were dispensed without the caution and the care that they are required to keep. Also, people have easy, easy access to some of these herbs, which honestly, some of them should be like prescription drugs. But when that happened, right, and people started abusing those herbal medicines, right, because they first came to Ayurveda only for the treatment aspect, then they started abusing the, treat, the, the herbs. The abuse was both by the consumer as well as by the Vedya or the Ayurvedic practitioner. And when that started happening, of course, there were people who didn't get the benefit because it, it was not done rightly. And as that happened, right, as, as even herbs were compromised in their own manufacturing, I think Ayurveda eventually, you know, kind of generated some of this doubt and confusion that is this really for me? I always say that somebody who's practicing Ayurveda properly will never tell you this is good for stomach. That's like saying gas is good for my car. But if you overfill your, your car with gas, it's going to leak out. Or it's like saying paint is good for my car. I mean, you're going to overpaint it and paint your seat. Something is only good for somebody at a certain given point of time. And when a practitioner talks to you like that, you know that he knows what he's talking about. So I think if people start going to the right practitioners and people go with the understanding that you don't abuse these drugs, I think Ayurveda will really get its due credit back. I also want to let all your listeners know that Ayur treatment is something you come to later for Ayurveda. If you follow Ayurvedic life, there is no need for treatment ever. You know, I read this very interesting concept. Uh, you might be knowing Dr. B.M. Hedge. So mm -hmm. uh, he says that Ayurveda is whole person healing. Like it does mm -hmm. not focus on you know, like organ to organ healing. It cures you from inside, you know. I would like you to, you to like explain to our listeners that how Ayurveda heals you, how Ayurveda cures you. Right, absolutely. Right? So now I'm going to give you... Uh, a sense, let's say your car, you know, mm. you have a, a flat tire. And I keep using the example of a car because it's easy for people to understand. You have a flat tire or your car is not working and you go take your car to the workshop, to the mechanic. And he says, okay, I'm going to fill air in your car or I'm going to change your tire. And and that's it. Right? It's done. They filled gas in the, they filled uh, air in the tire or they've repaired the tire and it's done. But then you still have a broken seat somewhere and then your steering may be really tight and maybe your oil has not changed for, for a very, very long time. And there is some gunk, you know, that's been collecting in your engine. So that's how human bodies are, right? Because what happens, it's what gives nutrition. What is our nutrition pipeline? You know, imagine the pipeline that really feeds our body. It is the blood and the plasma, the rasa and the rakta, right? They're just flowing all through your body. Anytime uh, there is any imbalance, right, which manifests as a disease at a certain spot, understand that the pipeline is also damaged. And the pipeline is also supported by your digestion or your digestive fire because that's where food is digested. Your mind plays a part. So you intake through your senses and your mind and you intake through your mouth and you know you process both of them then they go into this pipeline of blood and plasma and they support your body in certain places depending on what's happening the vulnerability you might have disease or an imbalance yes you know from the top you can put a little band-aid on that imbalance and address it but what are you going to do to the whole mechanism behind that that has been damaged the pipelines are damaged the whole digestion and sometimes the mind plays a very important part. Every disease, right? Now in Ayurveda, the first sutra of Ashtang Rudayam is Raga Adi Rogan, right? So it says all diseases start in the mind, start with some form of lust or disease. Even if you, it's lust or greed, even if you have that extra piece of cake, it starts from greed. Every disease starts from greed, anger. So your mind lures you into doing things which are less than good for your body that goes through your agni hurts the agni or the digestive fire <coughs> your pipelines get damaged 
certain organ in your body, which already is a little weak and vulnerable, will catch on to that imbalance and now become a disease, right? So Ayurveda does not even look at the disease. Somebody comes and tells me, how do, what do I do for diabetes? I'm like, let's look at what your body needs. It's not about what the diabetes needs. It's about understanding what is the environment of the body. So Ayurveda functions on everything from your digestion to the overall environment, the temperature, the moisture. We are bringing back the whole environment back. Shwata, I want to use one more example to make this more clear to our listeners. You know, let's say that you've had a, a rainstorm. You know, it's been monsoon. There's been lots and lots of rain. And the rain has actually gone and peeled off your walls and gone inside your basement and into your pipes. But you can't really see all of this. What you can actually just see is this big puddle that's made right outside your house. And, you know, you can go and clean out that puddle and you can say, oh, now the rain has gone away. But there is systemic damage that you can't see. There may be fungus growing somewhere. And so the whole environment, when the, the whole environment needs to be fixed, you can't just fix the puddle. You need to reset the environment. And Ayurveda works on resetting that environment in a very systemic and a holistic manner. It'll, if anybody tells you, I can find a treatment for your diabetes, for your um, you know, ulcerative colitis, I'd say, you know, that's that practitioner has not understood the body. You come to get healed from diabetes, you get healed out of sleep and, and skin and everything starts functioning better. And that's how Ayurveda, it's a Shuddha Chikitsa, one that really looks at everything. You know, what you said about mind is like, like, it's interesting because, you know, like I read this somewhere that health is about the environment you live in and mind is the environment of the body. Yes. So it's yeah. important to have that, you know, that healthy environment to be overall healthy because, you know, what you meant, because I have experienced sometimes that we feel ill, but if we don't know that where is it coming from. Sometimes it's just in the mind, like we're just so stressed and like a lot of underlying things happening with us. And that generation of disease, right? So Ayurveda says every time disease is, is creeping up in your body, it starts with arati or restlessness, the feeling of unease. Right. So the feeling of unease is exactly where disease starts because you're uneasy. You probably take an action, you know, maybe grab a packet of chips or do something which is not so good for you. And thus you will begin this slight imbalance, which can eventually become disease in the whole Western medicine system. Unless the disease has, has come on a blood test or on a scan, it's not considered a disease. Ayurveda understands that the samprapti or the pathology begins six steps before it becomes manifest as a disease. There are six steps to it and then it becomes a full manifestation. And the first step is accumulation of doshas. Doshas are accumulating somewhere and that's when we have to tune in. And Ayurveda can tune in if you live Ayurvedically, you can tune in at the accumulation stage. And you don't have to wait till the sixth stage where you've already manifested into a full disease. It's amazing, you know, like how you can rediscover your own body, your own, you know, little, little things that's happening with you through the power of Ayurveda. Like how amazing is this? So amazing. I'm with you, Shweta. It amazes me every <laughs> single day. I'm, I'm in love. You know, but like... Is it true that for Ayurvedic lifestyle or for, you know, like, because generally now what happens is, okay, if we apply, say, a face pack, we expect, okay, face pack, lagate hi, I want my skin to be pimple free. I want it to be free of any, you know, dark spots or any other treatment we take. So how important is it to be, to be patient when we are taking Ayurvedic treatments or when we are following an Ayurvedic lifestyle? Because a lot of people fall out and, you know, that happens that, okay, it's not working for me, but you need to be patient, right? So I'll tell you, we, everything you have to ask, it's a, it's an overall attitude of your life. Hmm. Are you a short term person? Are hmm. you a long term person? If you're a short term, if you have the short term mindset, you will probably make all decisions, not only health decisions. All your decisions are, I want to feel good today. I don't know what it's like. I don't care what's going to happen later. Like, for example, I see sometimes people go on really, really harsh diets. Or sometimes people create a lot of damage with their children. I'm trying to use examples from multiple facets of people's life. Or I'm just going to take this job today because, you know, it's just easy. Versus I'm going to work and, you know, improve my skills for a better job, right? So basically, it's a life attitude. Are you looking at your life at 70 and planning 
backwards 70 80 90 and planning backwards or are you just living in the today if you are living in the today you may be very tempted to say ayurveda is not for me i might as well just go and have you know this great uh, isotretinoin and fix my skin right away or in a matter of two weeks versus putting lodradi leper and waiting it out you know i'm just giving you two examples one is an extreme uh, western drug allopathic drug uh, the isotretinoin for your skin which works magic you are glowing but then you may not be able to have children when you want to you know conception becomes a problem hormones become a problem so short term amazing results long term compromised body while if you do it the ayurvedic way and you say i'm going to do a viracha or a purge and cleanse my stomach i'm going to use this lepa yes you may not get the results right away but then you live at least a better complete life long term your body has healed from within your actual if you actually do the treatment for the you know let's say for acne or heat in your body you're actually improving your fertility you may be just treating acne so as to say but you're actually cooling your environment you're making it moist and more lovely so by just healing your acne you're actually making your body stronger when you do it the ayurvedic route so that patience or that long term versus short term is if you are one of those people you know anybody who's listening who says i don't care about tomorrow i want the result today i want you to examine you're probably doing that in all areas of your life and i personally shweta i tell all my clients everybody i work with guys next 10 years i'm not worried about let's think of the 20 years <laughs> after this you know you want to think about those 20 years and when we plan for that Oh my god these years are anyways just amazing You know, you touched upon a very important point and it just shows that how Ayurveda is just interrelated to our life and in general a way of thinking, you know, it also relates with yoga. So uh, like in yoga also, for example, you know, like uh, like my yoga teacher also tells me that while we are performing in Yasna, so she can actually just tell, okay, this is going on in your mind and that's why it's happening. It's just showing in your Asana, it's just showing in your body. वी फील की बहुत प्रॉब्लम हो रही है बाहर से लाइक कुछ हो रहा है एक्चुअली प्रॉब्लम बहुत सिंपल है लाइक इट्स जस्ट अ सिंपल सोल्यूशन जस्ट बी प्रेजेंट एंड जस्ट स्टार्ट लिसनिंग टू योर बॉडी स्टार्ट लिसनिंग टू वॉट योर बॉडी नीड्स वॉट क्यूज लाइक यू आर यू नो लाइक यू नो इट बेटर ऑब्वियसली एंड इट्स जस्ट मैजिकल लाइक वॉट आई वेदा कैन डू फॉर अस so you know nadi like tell me this thing that now if like our listeners have known so much about ayurveda and most of them they want to start an ayurvedic lifestyle what should be their say first or second step Mhm. So I think the first thing I'll tell you is give up the herbs for the first for the first couple of weeks. Don't say mm-hmm. that because sometimes shwata people come to me and they're like, "Oh, I'm taking turmeric and ayurvedic." Nothing to do with that. <laughs> you know, you could you could have poison and if it works in your body it's ayurvedic and you could have turmeric and if it doesn't work for you it's non ayurvedic. Ayurveda is only what supports life. If it supports your life it's ayurvedic. But I would say just start by simple two rules i say right so you are a human being you are on this planet uh, we are the we are diurnal mammals which means we wake up with the sun and we sleep with the sun this is easy for anyone to understand including children so we honor the cycle of the sun all animals all mammals on this planet eat according to what their cycle is right so you know they'll all eat at a given time similarly i'll say if you want to really practice ayurveda honor that cycle of the sun eat your heaviest meal for lunch because the sun is out your agni is out eat a nice small warm breakfast because morning is a cold time so you eat a warmer little small warm breakfast agni is just coming in the way i describe the agni in the morning is you know shweta they used to have those scooters i don't know in india they still have them where you have to kind of go and then it starts and you have to kick on that pedal right so that's how your agni is starting out in the morning don't dump it don't even gunk Three liters of water. Have a small cup of hot water. Have a small breakfast in in the morning after you exercise. Exercise is the first thing I would say. The ayama is extremely important, especially in the winter months. Summer months you can skip exercise. So you exercise a little bit. You eat your uh, breakfast. Eat lunch as the heaviest meal. As the sun sets and vata sets outside, vata sets in your body. you eat a small dinner if somebody can just make this change this one change in their life right 
they can see I live Ayurvedically and in three weeks they will notice a huge huge difference if they don't if they're not sleeping better if they're not pooping better I mean I will give up my degree because it makes a huge difference but the second thing I'm going to give three ideas right if you want to go further than this then I would say make sure all your foods are fresh warm and cooked so cook all your foods your, uh, just as the food, the Agni works on your food and takes it down, you also need Agni Sanskar to cook your foods. Uh, yes, people are like, no other species in the world cooks their food. No other species has conversations and records podcasts and sits on computers and invents things. You know, we are a special species and our brain evolved when we discovered fire. If you study the history of mankind and once fire was discovered, that's when we actually became human. You know, we actually became the species after fire was discovered because we took less energy to digest our food and we gave more energy to our mind, right? So I'd say cook all your foods, keep them all warm in temperature. If you can add spices, whatever spices, you know, you want to put jeera, you want to put cumin, coriander, uh, turmeric, add spices to your meals, add good fats. I like ghee as my favorite fat. And that's the second thing I would say you want to do. The th and of course, you don't drink, if you're having warm foods, the understood thing is you don't drink cold beverages, you don't drink cold smoothies, you don't drink cold water. And the third thing that you want to do, if you want to add even more, the last thing I'll tell you is add some simple, simple ideas to your dinacharya, to your daily regimen. And a few simple things which don't take much time but make a big difference is doing nasya, you know, nose drops. Uh, with oil uh, because it goes directly to your brain nourishes all of it your brain is a command center it, just even all your respiratory system it helps do tongue cleaning with a scraper and if you can add more do abhyanga uh, oil massage and i know i think uh, amritam has some good abhyanga oils if i'm not mistaken but basically uh i think if you do all of that uh shweta you're, you can say proudly with your chest inflated that you follow Ayurveda. And it's not even complicated. You can live anywhere in the world. I live in New York City. It doesn't mean that you have to live in a particular uh, ashram to follow it. You can just do it, eat any food you want, eat be anywhere, as long as they're good fats, warm, spiced, you're eating according to the cycle of the sun. You've nailed it. I'm sure it's going to help people to, you know, start living Ayurvedic lifestyle. And thank you, Nidhi, for explaining it the way you did, you know, like, uh, kudos to you. I can like really sense that passion that, you know, that feeling of attachment you have with Ayurveda. We're going to rediscover this towards the end. But before that, I have drawn out a list of commonly asked questions that people have with regards to Ayurveda. Uh, let's try to answer them. The first question is, are Ayurvedic medicines safe? So if Ayurvedic, firstly, you want to get it from a trusted pharmacy. Okay. So it's a pharmacy that's been there for a long time. They really know what they're doing. So do research on the pharmacy. Number two, it's only safe if you've been prescribed by a doctor and you don't take it for a long period of time. Sometimes, yes, when not manufactured properly, they can have, you know, more lead content than you want them to have. B, if you take them for longer periods of time, any herbs for that matter, look, any medicines for that matter, if it's going, if it, if it's going to cure you, you know, and if you don't do, it's, if it's something is going to cure you, it's strong, it's potent. Ayurvedic medicines are lovely, as in if you take them at the right dosage for, for the right amount of time, it'll be, you know, your body, it's shuddha chikitsa, it's not supposed to have side effects. But if you take them, self-medicate, abuse, take them for long periods of time without a practitioner, guidance of a practitioner, I would say beware, just as you would for anything else. So how is Ayurveda different from allopathy or homeopathy? So Ayurveda, like I said, it's the science of life, right? Mm. Allopathy is, uh, allopathy says, hey, this is what you're experiencing, you know, as a symptom. Most allopathic medicines just either work on the symptoms. So for example, a paracetamol or, you know, acetaminophen, which basically treats, so-called treats fever. All it does is brings the temperature down, does not treat the fever, right? It does not go and reverse the pathology. So what a lot of the allopathic medicines do, they don't reverse pathology. Pathology is how this disease was generated. What were the different steps in the disease to actually become a disease? But what it does is temporarily shuts down the disease, puts a band-aid on it, right? Which is required for some people at some point. What Ayurveda does, it reverses pathology. It says, let me build you back grounds up. 
So in the treatment modality, that's one difference between Ayurveda and allopathy. But Ayurveda is a complete science of life, right? Homeopathy, I like and I enjoy. But again, the pure, again, homeopathy is a treatment modality. It's not like Ayurveda, which is a holistic, complete modality. Again, homeopathy will also just go as a treatment. You know, if you have allergies, it'll say, hey, you know, let me just put a little, put the knob down on the allergies. Mm -hmm. Let me put the knob down lovingly, gently on whatever condition you have. But it's not saying, let me restore, let me give you a full renovation. That's homeopathy doesn't do that. Allopathy is more like putting a bandaid and saying, shut up to the disease. Ayurveda says, let's renovate you. Let's do a gut renovation, you know, build you back up as to the best we can, given your age and disease condition. How lovely is that rebuilding ourselves with Ayurveda? Yeah, absolutely. So next one is, which is best, Ayurveda or allopathy? So I would say for critical care, right? Let's say you've broken bones. I mean, honestly, Ayurveda has amazing bro- bones treatment, uh, treatment. So I'm taking that example back uh, because the chikitsa is amazing. So mm. let's take that example back. But let's say that you really have had a terrible accident and you need something done very, very urgently. Just because of the ease of availability and the high standards of care, I would say you can go to the normal medical system. You can, you know, that's not really allopathy, but I would say beyond, besides critical care, right? To me, right, I am a big advocate, a big proponent for Ayurveda. It requires, it's a long-term game. It's not a short-term game. It requires love and patience and understanding of your own body. You can't say, hey, I'm going to be eating stale foods or cold foods or, uh, you know, raw foods and processed foods and still want Ayurveda to work. Ayurveda wants you to respect the environment of your body just as you do. But to me, it's a no-brainer. It's what honors the human life to the highest level. It's Ayurveda. So the next one is, are Ayurvedic doctors real doctors? Uh, I don't know what the word doctor really means. Like, I don't know what science means. To me, what people call science in the world today is not science. It's information. If you're going to give me a formula and say it's science, to me, because I can prove the formula on a paper, it's still mm, information. information right. It's not science to me, it's information. Science to me is something I can take through my logical brain mm. and really comprehend deeply. And Ayurveda has been that. Yeah. It has been a science. Everything else was information. Ayurveda was science. So when you say doctor, I'm not sure what a doctor means. But if you want to just, you want someone to tell you that uh, if your definition of a doctor is that, hey, you don't listen to your body. I am the expert and I tell you what to put in your mouth and you just do it, then your body will come to the other side or you'll feel better or you won't have this headache or fever. And if that's the definition of a doctor is somebody who you can outsource everything to, then maybe Ayurvedic practitioners are not doctors. But if you want someone to hold your hand and teach you about your body and really respect it from within and, you know, it's outside and insides and work with you to renovate it rebuild it rediscover it recreate it and if that's your definition of a doctor i would say ayurvedic practitioners are just amazing doctors and how is ayurveda connected to the heritage of india i mean i think there's something in our land which was really uh you know there's some meridians that go through the earth uh where india is and they have different energetic vibrations for that reason We've had a lot of their places in India where you can connect within and to the truth of the cosmos much easier, right? So, for example, Varanasi, you know, multiple sages and Mahavira and Buddha and Kabir and all came from there, right? Because there is something about the land which gives you the truth of life. So, Ayurveda was written with that deep knowing of life. It was not written in laboratories. It was not written in research labs. Uh, in you know in research centers it was written with the understanding of how all the vedas was written and the understanding was yatha brahmande tatha pinde tatha pinde yatha pinde tatha brahmande which means as is the cosmos such is the human body as is the human body such is the universe and by meditating on the human body you can actually me- learn about the universe when you meditate on the universe you learn about the human body So the innate intelligence that we carry as human beings, when we shut our senses, that science was mastered in India. And all of the Vedas are written with that deep knowing. 
yes it was i'm sure other cultures hippocrates they had elements of this and they may have had full understanding but they were in the middle of land was destroyed and there was war india was protected for a long time people could not get to india we've been protected by the mountains by the himalayas and the mountains of afghan we've been protected by water on both sides choppy oceans so india stayed could preserve its literature for so many years but because ayurveda is the science of life i believe that other cultures have had the same discovery you know we've had it vaster we've had it easier we've been able to preserve it because we were not you know we were protected for many years till the moguls finally came and because of that we've preserved our heritage and that's our that's our connection with ayurveda but i do tell everybody that while i'm really proud that it comes from india i can't get attached to the idea of indian because it's the science of life it's universal i mean you could be living in you know just how every baby is born knowing how to drink from its mother's breast it's an innate knowing ayurveda comes from an innate knowing you can be anywhere and you can have access to this knowledge by yourself so yeah as of now the texts are from india and india has been this great land of great opportunity so i'm really proud of it <laughs> and the last one is can ayurveda cure everything no i rather cannot cure everything and i rather is very open about that in fact in the first few chapters of the ancient texts of shangradayam they tell you that diseases are curable and they're incurable and those that are curable are also two categories easily curable difficult to cure incurable diseases also are categorized into two that cannot be cured but maintained for example today you can say that's diabetes or thyroid and that are completely you know so there's krutra sadhya which is hard to treat and then there is just a sadhya which you cannot be treated so ayurveda tells you the whole like range of diseases it also tells you to evaluate to look at a disease and say which category this will fall into and it does not just depends on the on the disease it depends on the patient where he lives what he eats how compliant he is and it's amazing shweta there's a whole list of parameters that you go through including the gender the age the environment of the patient the compliance levels the mindset and you, you if you check box and depending on what score you get you can decide whether this is curable or incurable and if curable how easy or hard if incurable maintainable or not and the ayurveda also yeah so ayurveda is it honors the mortality of life that you know as human beings you come you decay and you go and uh, it does not make claims that it can cure everything but if there is something that can be cured i know ayurveda can do it <laughs> describe to me like you know when did you met ayurveda and your relationship with ayurveda and the kind of impact ayurveda has had on your life so shweta i don't know any other way to live right but ayurvedically because i was born in a family when my grandfather was a practitioner you know my father was and but my grandfather was and we all lived ayurvedically we did everything ayurvedically and but it was just it was so much when we when we grew up shweta we were never scared of disease there was no fear of 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 sickness there was just a freedom that comes from being well you know just this great freedom of being well and being able to enjoy life and by just knowing that you're honoring the world the nature around you you're honoring the rhythm of human life just made us feel very secure and happy in our being right i pursued more psychology and understanding the human mind in the first i would say 20 years of my life i pursued more of psychology and how does the human mind work and all of that and then i because the body i took for granted i i already knew it but then when i moved to the us i realized oh my god like not everybody understands this people don't have no idea about how to tune into your body so that's when i said it's my life's work now to take this upon and uh, i have raised my two children with this understanding and awareness and i think ayurveda is amazing where it also honors the mortality of life the decay of the human body and the preservation of the human body and i think it's just uh, i have it's always been uh, been a love affair for me ayurveda always <laughs> has been and it'll continue to be for lifetimes uh, and uh, so that's how it is it's one of those sciences once you get your hands on it you can't get your hands off it so be careful anybody who gets their hands on it deeply it'll make you a happier a, a fuller person mm. So if you had to say sing a song for your this love affair what would be that song would be tell me tere bina nahi jeena give me one lyric nidhi i i said i am a very bad singer i cry it's okay so I it's okay 
I am probably the worst singer. So you can. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't even know the whole words, but I'm like. whatever that song is so i definitely cannot live without ayurveda and you are motivating so many people to you know live with ayurveda also i have this one question like does ayurveda say something about smiles about smiles no you know what ayurveda does say from what i can recall is in the chikitsa chapter in the treatment chapter it it gives you few things of observation about your patient so it says does your patient move to music is there are they very stiff are they smiling a lot so to make an assessment of your patient a patient giving their you know g- given their smile but that being said right like ayurveda teaches you the gunas or the properties of everything so with that we can understand right what what a smile means it gives you the tools to make an estimate of what a smile could be you know there's a code like what if you decode how you decode handwriting you can decode a smile you know how is the smile do the eyes smile what are the teeth like beneath the smile what does the person smile at like i say that kafas always you know kafas will smile gently like this and like, you know, kafas will not smile at dirty jokes pitas will only smile or laugh at intelligent jokes so that thing intelligent pitas if you don't make an intelligent joke the pitas going to be like oh, what are you what is that <laughs> and the vatas will laugh at everything and they laugh super loudly right so you you see the gunas and you know you can assess what what it means so whether it's the smile or the laughter or the sleep ayurveda has given you the tools to assess it all How amazing is that and let's just welcome Ayurveda into our life so Nidhi just give me one last message for someone just abhi bhi jisko lag raha hai 1% ki yaar kya karu matlab start kar hi lu kya ayurvedic lifestyle just one last message for that person hmm so if you're thinking agar aap soch rahe hain ki main start kar hi lu ayurvedic lifestyle i would say aap sirf apne aap ko sochiye idhar baat jab aap 75 years ki ho when you're 75 years old right do you want to own it or you want to be you know sitting dependent unhappy because believe me when you're young every battle you can fight when you're older man se insaan thak jata hai there's very little to look forward to in life you know plus when your body gives way it's you don't be sometimes people could live on for 20 years in that depressed state so you think about how you want to be at 60 70 80 90 the ja- the japanese do a fantastic job of it they live a life today that so that when they're 90 they can still drink tea Uh, and sit on the tatami with their friends and have a conversation to me that's my goal i when i want to be 90 i want to sit and drink my tea and have a conversation with if you want that life then look no further start today yay let's start thank you nidhi <laughs> thank you so much for being with us today thank you thank you so much for that it was a pleasure